Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be comparing the eight year difference between when the first third gen year model for the Tacoma came out versus the last year for the third gen. So I have a 2017 TRD off-road for the purposes of today's video. This is a 2016. 16 and 17 really had zero changes to them. The bright orange that you see is a 2023 TRD Pro. So they are slightly different. However, the TRD off-road is the closest model to the Pro. So there's going to be very slight differences between both of these models. And I have a highly modified TRD off-road. So I'm going to do my best to talk about the stock parts on this and how they compared to this 2023. And we'll start off with the biggest difference is the headlight housings. Now on my truck, these are aftermarket headlight housings where I have the DRL and LED strip that runs around the headlights and the high beam. So I had those installed before Toyota decided to install them themselves and put them on some of the later Toyota Tacomas. They are LEDs. I do not have LEDs for these ones. So it is nice that Toyota upgraded them and they also kind of copied the aftermarket world with those headlight housings. I do think they look very, very nice and it gives it a clean look and a little bit of aggressive design with the DRLs and on the newer models, the turn signal goes the full horseshoe shape. Aside from that, the front end really isn't all that different. For the Pro, you do get a little bit different of a design for the fog lights. These are the factory fog lights from the 2016, 2017. Everything that I have also cut off to fit this bumper is exactly what you see here with the bumper valence and the corners of the plastic that is all the same. Same cutout in the grill too. However, I did have the large chrome Toyota logo in my grill, which is why I decided to take that off. And a lot of people do opt to get the pro grill even for their non-pro trucks. So it's kind of the same, similar design as my aftermarket one there. But another huge difference is the forward-facing camera. I believe that was introduced in maybe 19 or 20. You could not get that on the 16 or 17s. So I really like the fact that you get the 360 camera system. I take my truck off-road. The camera systems are definitely very beneficial. And then of course, the hood scoop is only on the Pros and the TRD Sports. So that was not on this off-road here. As we work our way to the sides now, fender flares are the same. I uh, mimicked the uh, TRD Pro badge with my uh, TRD off-road badge because the Pros were first introduced with that badging. As you can tell for the 23, we just have a Tacoma down on the side, which I did have down below as well. I'll show why there's no Pro badge there here in just a second. Similar design for the side mirrors. However, there's a camera system like I mentioned earlier. And then I'm very shocked to see that the TRD Pro has a normal sidestep instead of rock sliders. If you're buying the Pro, hopefully you're taking this off-road, you need some more protection than just that plastic sidestep. So it is a little bit disappointing to see that it doesn't come with one. I believe that the Colorado ZR2 actually comes with sliders from the factory. So I'd like to see Toyota add that. And then this is why you don't see the badge because they have stamped TRD Pro and the side of the bed. I think that is a very cool design. It matches with Tacoma in the tailgate there. And as you can tell, I have cut off everything for the bumper. So we'll look at the TRD Pro here. Having the body colored bumper is stock for the Pro. You can get that on the sports and then it was an option in later model years for the off-road. So I had the chrome bumper end caps and then the parking sensors I could have got. That was part of the technology package, which I opted not to do because I was doing some more modifications. And then the exhaust comes out the passenger side just like it did on the earlier models. So honestly, not too many exterior differences or design element changes. Everything is pretty much the same with some minor cosmetic changes here and there. But overall, it's a very, very similar truck. Now on the interior, this is where it gets a little bit different. So over on this left side of the steering wheel, there is a view button for that camera system. Everything else is the same. I do not have the automatic headlight adjustments, however. Steering wheel is virtually identical. Gauge cluster setup is identical. This screen is a little bit different. It has physical buttons on both sides, and you will see in my truck here in a second how that differs. 
There's also a screen here, heated seats for the leather seats. I don't think 16 or 17 had the leather option. I could be wrong, maybe the Pro had it back then. And then everything else, we have blind spot monitoring, I have the ECT power button, I have the rear glass, which is actually over on this side for that control, wireless charging pad, shift knob is obviously different. One thing that I will say, let's fire this up real quick, because I'm not a huge fan of this backup camera. So I'm going to show the differences with this and my 17. It looks like it's almost got that fish eye design where it's cutting off the corners here and it's it's very almost encased even in the full screen view you can see the wasted space in the top and the bottom just to be able to change some of these it does have the top down view though which i do like and then if we push on view look at this weird obstruction in the forward facing camera why is that placed there it's interesting to see. If you push on that again though, you can look at the side mirrors and look at that camera angle. But I am not a huge fan of how small this camera system feels. So again, keep that in mind when we go over to my truck. And then everything else, this does have the sunroof, which I don't have. I, I could have got with the tech package. This has crawl control, which my truck does also offer. And then there's also a huge difference in the back seats. So if you look at the headliner, it might be hard to see. I'm gonna to try to do my best here. You can see it goes all the way up. Hopefully you can tell my with my finger there, but let's hop in here and you'll really see the difference. So the headliner goes up at five foot 10. My head is just up against the headliner. This is a small back seat area. They really haven't made any improvements from that year to the 2023. Maybe the next year they will increase the back seat room so it is a little bit tight uh, but you do get that added headroom and then all the storage is exactly the same with flipping up these seats and real quick for the bed space there is no compartment right there this has a small one on the passenger side and a three-prong outlet i don't know why they decided to get rid of that because in my truck if the camera can focus, it's a little dirty, but I have that huge compartment with the two over on that side. I really haven't used that compartment, but it's odd that they would delete it. I really don't see a reason for that. But if you look in the back of my truck now, the headliner doesn't move at all. In the other truck, it was kind of low here and then it went up. So I still have about the same amount of headroom but it feels a little bit more open in the back of this year because the headliner doesn't dip down as much as it did on the 23. So it's interesting to see that. I feel more, more roomy in the back of my truck versus that one. But let's hop up front so we can take a look at that backup camera. So you'll notice a little bit different with this kind of useless cubby on that side. So they did do away with that cubby space there. But as we fire this up and get some of that uh, dust off of the screen there, we put it into reverse. Look at how much larger this is. There's no wasted space on the screen. It goes all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom and the sides. I don't have any other angles. That is all that I do get. Now I could have done the anytime camera where you can hook up a forward facing camera and view it from that screen. I never got around to doing that. And then as you can tell, a little bit less buttons down below, same wireless charging pad, much smaller shift knob here. And then all of the controls up top, just like you saw. No sunroof, no leather seats. But overall, very similar in the gauge cluster, steering wheel too, all of the same controls. I have cruise, I do not have the adaptive cruise which some of the 17, 18 year models did offer the sensors, but it didn't offer the adaptive cruise just yet. I think that was a 2020 uh, option, but even the trim accents are the same. So relatively the same. Again, not a whole lot of differences, both on the exteriors or on the interiors, but let's get these out on the road and see if there's a difference in how they drive. As we set off now behind the wheel of my Tacoma, so one of the earlier models for the third gen, a slight difference that I haven't talked about yet is 
the fact that the camera is currently attached to the GoPro mount on the inside of the windshield. Now, Toyota did this, I believe, because Tacoma enthusiasts were off-roading, overlanding, camping, doing adventures where they were bringing a camera with them and they needed somewhere to mount it. And you didn't want to leave suction cup mounts, whatever, rings on the inside of your glass. I have my windshield tinted, so every time I set up a camera, I usually use the GoPro if it's in my vehicle, or the GoPro mount, and they did away with that. The 23 doesn't have that. I don't believe 18 or 19s had that either, so it was only like a 16, 17 kind of thing. Really kind of not purposeful. You could put maybe a dash cam there if you wanted to and just have it a little bit higher because it is within the dot matrix where suction cups wouldn't be able to uh, adhere properly. So that's a very insignificant minor difference. But then another similarity that I forgot to mention is both of these trucks have the uh, Bilstein tuned suspension. I don't have that suspension anymore because of the lift and what I decided to do. But with that suspension, it gave the off-road a little bit of a lift, but with the TRD Pro that's sitting back, the orange one there, that has about an inch and a half and a half inch in the rear of lift over, I believe, over an off-road as well. So it gives it a little bit more of an added height difference to give it more ground clearance, closer to the high nine inches of ground clearance, just shy of 10 inches, where this one had right around 9.5 three, four, if you want to get technical, it was somewhere around there. But aside from that, let's talk about how these drive out on the road. I'm not going to be able to talk about the stock suspension in this truck, but I had it in the truck long enough to tell you that it was, it was very nice. It kind of felt floaty in a sense. If you went over bumps, you could feel the truck kind of move and go with the bumps. So it gave it a, a good suspension. I believe, or I think, it should be a little bit stiffer in the stock form. It had some brake dive to it if you slammed on the brakes a good bit. But other than that, both trucks really drive about the same. It's the same platform, it's the same truck, just there's some minor differences, of course, with the suspension in any of the models that you go with because not all of them have the same suspension. And then obviously I have a different exhaust, so it is going to be louder. But they really feel, at least from the driving position here, they feel about the same. Headliner up front is a lot more similar than in the back, like I mentioned earlier. And I mean, it's, it's what you'd expect from a Tacoma because it is the same third generation. But aside from that, interior material wise and how it feels driving, not a whole lot of differences, but there is so one other thing that I'd like to talk about, let's hop into the TRD Pro. And so with a slight change of scenery, jumping into the TRD Pro, what I wanna talk about is the transmission in the third generation, because Toyota kinda of took the transmission five speed from the previous generation, threw in a sixth gear for the third gen, and they really didn't revise the transmission well enough that it's been kind of a big issue with the third gen as far as how the automatic shifts. You can go with a six speed manual if you don't want to uh, worry about that, of course. But in all of the automatics, they're running the uh, 390s for the uh, gearing, for the axle ratio, uh, for the autos, like I just said. And so what I have found though to be interesting is in this 2023, I don't feel like I need to re-gear this truck. I re-geared my truck to 529s, and I did that for the larger tires as well, the extra weight that I've added to my truck. But in the stock configuration in my truck, it was very shift happy, especially out on the highway. I really wasn't utilizing sixth gear, and I didn't really notice that until I kind of read a little bit more on it and started to really listen to the truck how it was shifting and how it was only using fifth gear and sometimes sixth gear. You would hear people say, the Tacomas will make it to six. So you have to be doing 70 miles an hour going downhill. If you start going uphill, it's gonna shift right back to fifth gear. But what I have found with this 2023 is I've been out on the highway. I'm not on the highway now, of course, but I've been driving it for a few days and I've been paying attention to that out on the highway doing about 65, 70 miles an hour, we're right around 1600 
for the RPM and it's actually staying in six gear. Like I've actually tested it. I've been using the shifter here, putting it in six, putting it back into auto, listening to it. This truck has been driving in six gear a lot better than before I re-geared my truck and it drives now, or this drives now how my truck does with the 529s. And you, can up, you could upgrade to 430s if you wanted to, which is actually in the manual uh, from the factory. So it's interesting to see in that eight year span that the gearing hasn't been changed. I don't know if maybe there's some ECU tunes with this 2023 that I'm unaware of in order to make the shifts smoother and actually utilize the gearing better, but I don't think there is. I feel like my truck in the stock form at 60 miles an hour was doing the same RPM and the same driving situation. So it's, it's interesting though to see that I haven't had that type of feedback with the, this 23 and from what I've experienced in the last couple of days, I would not re-gear this truck unless you felt the need to with larger tires. But even then, my main focus in re-gearing my truck was for the shifting, not necessarily the tires, because you could go 33s, you could go to 35s with the stock gears in this truck and be fine. A lot of people think that going to larger tires means that you absolutely must re-gear, and that's not the case. But in this truck, I really don't see the need to re-gear. It seems like it drives very, very smooth. And I was shocked to see that. So I don't know what Toyota did, but in eight years, they really haven't done many updates or upgrades for the transmission. And I'm wondering because of the fourth generation Toyota coming, maybe they have just wanted to kind of let this go, let it, they knew they were going to the fourth generation, so maybe they just kind of pumped them out. You know, they're reliable, they're still working. Yes, they have a slight hiccup, but they're like, we'll go to the 23, 24. This is all speculation. It could be a completely new platform, new transmission, new engines, and they just wanted to start over with the fourth gen. So it's kind of interesting to see that, but from driving this, it's interesting to see that there wasn't from what I know, a change, but it drives differently. And it's interesting to see that. But aside from that, it everything else is the same. Between the eight year difference with a 16 and a 23, Toyota usually goes about 10 years. They do minor changes here and there. Some upgrades, updates, minor cosmetics, things like that. And they usually go 10 years. Now we are getting to that point. We are in the last year for the third generation Toyota Tacoma. So it is time for that major change with the fourth gen Tacoma. I'm excited to see that. And hopefully you've been excited to see the last eight model years for this third gen Tacoma. So over the last eight years for the third gen Tacoma, there really hasn't been many changes that have been too significant, but I've enjoyed watching what Toyota has done to this model over the last several years. And I'm very excited for the all new next generation. I had a 2007, my 2017, and I think I'll have one before 2027 for my third Tacoma. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, stay tuned for plenty more Tacoma content and for the next gen that I will hopefully be purchasing when that truck comes out. But if you enjoyed today's video on the Tacomas, give it a huge thumbs up, consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.